Well, no, thank you very much. Uh, greetings to everyone for World Water Day. Congratulations to Professor Stephen Carpenter, who has just been uh, appointed as this year's Stockholm Water Prize winner. And I'm wearing my Stockholm Water Festival tie in his honour. But this is also a historical artefact, uh, which I'm going to mention as I go along. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks for inviting me here. It's a great privilege to be in this in this intellectual powerhouse of IDS. Uh, those of us who are practitioners uh, in international development revere IDS as one of the places that that generates intellectual energy. So it's great to be here. It's the first time I've ever been here, and thanks for asking me. Um, as Lila mentioned, I've been working in water and sanitation in developing countries uh, actually since about 1987. Uh, in various different roles, principally as a practitioner. So I have done a little bit of work uh, studying these international conferences and processes a few years ago uh, when I was working as a consultant, but mainly uh, my perspective is really as someone who has been a participant in many of these meetings, but also a participant in many of the uh, organizations and the movements in the sector. So, in that sense, what I'm giving is a personal insider's view into some of these processes, not an objective or academic view. And I hope there will be other people in the room who can provide that more objective uh, viewpoint. What I'm going to talk about, my brief is to cover 20 years in 20 minutes. Uh, so, I'm going to do it as follows. Uh, the, the, the point that uh, Lila gave me is to say, where are we now? So that's the drawing I'm just going to draw for you. Uh, and then I'm going to rush briefly through some of the milestones. Lila has mentioned several, and so has Guri, so I'm not going to go through a whole list of them. But just a couple of things to help you get that sense of, of, the, of the progression over the last 20 years or so. Then I'm going to talk about the major policy trends in the 20 years since New Delhi. Uh, the key lessons and how have we incorporated them. It's quite optimistic actually, the how. Uh, maybe we should say whether we've incorporated them, because most of them we haven't. Uh, and then at the end I'm going to look ahead. So that's the structure of my presentation. And uh, let me start then with where are we now? Okay, this is where we are. Um, this, this gap, this line here is, is 1990, okay, and this is 2010, so I'm just, I'm covering uh, two decades in one of your whiteboards, and roughly to scale, the difference between engineers and mathematicians is that we don't worry too much about the precision of our numbers, but I'm going to do it roughly to scale, and, and the top is where the world's population is going to reach. Is it going to be 9 billion or 9.5 billion or whatever? Um, so this is vaguely to scale. In 1990, there were just over 5 billion people in the world. And now there are, call it 6.5. So we're, we're here somewhere. OK, that's total population. And where are we? What have we done in water and in sanitation? In water, we are just doing better. You can't say we're doing particularly well, but the water line does do this. So the number of people without water is fewer now than it was 20 years ago. Uh, but the sanitation line, as you know, is not doing well. And it does that. Not too bad. Okay. Uh, what I'm trying to show here is that the two and a half billion people who lack sanitation now, uh, depressingly, that's pretty well the same number. Two and a half billion people lacked sanitation at that time. So you can see how progress in sanitation over the 20 years is not uh, decreasing that gap. Does that make it approximately? Yeah, it does. It doesn't look too bad. Anyway, so that's where are we now. And I, to me, all the fine words about, about policies or organisations or meetings, you know, that's all nonsense. Because those are not uh, the, the, the aims that we're heading for. The only reason we do all that stuff is to serve people. And here are the people, and we're not serving them. Particularly in terms of sanitation. 
So I'm painting a slightly uh, depressing picture in terms of where are we now, and I just thought that diagram is the only important one, because that is talking about people in the world, and particularly those who lack water and sanitation. So that's my sophisticated high technology graphic. That's where are we now. Uh, milestones. Milestones since New Delhi. The first one I want to mention is what is nowadays called a prequel, uh, and it's the Mar del Plata conference, and I think Lila just touched on it briefly earlier. I'm not sure if anyone in the room was at the Mar del Plata conference in 1977. No, there aren't all that many people around active now who were there. Um, and, and I didn't go because they didn't let school kids go to it. Um, <laughs> But it really is very interesting. I mean, we say that there's a lot of good stuff in Delhi that is still applies today, but actually, there's a load of really good material from Mar del Plata that still applies today. And it still, I think, is the only UN conference on water that there has ever been. And all the material for Mar del Plata was published at the time, and I presume it's all on the internet now. So I commend it to you. If you want to do a historical analysis, don't just go back to 1990. Go back to 1977 uh, and have a look at Mar del Plata. And, of course, that was the conference that then led on to the creation of the International Drinking Water Supply and Sanitation Decade, for which the New Delhi meeting was the, uh, the ending meeting. So that's a prequel, if that's the right way of putting it. Uh, New Delhi, of course, that's the whole point of the, of the gathering here, and, and Guri has talked about that quite extensively. Um, I, I was there by mistake because uh, my boss, the late David Collett, who was then the director of Water Aid, was supposed to be there and hurt his back or something, and I got a rather peremptory telephone call. I was in Kathmandu, and he said, it's very close, you're in Kathmandu, get on the aeroplane, go to Delhi. <laughs> so I was very, very uh, ill-prepared, and, and he said, sit in the back, don't say anything, and listen to what's going on. <laughs> um, so that's what I did, so I was there, and I heard all this stuff. Um, Okay, then, then in terms of milestones since then, this is the point. Yeah, Dublin. We've already talked about Dublin a couple of times, and I think it's really interesting, because some people will say, rather as Guri mentioned, that, that Dublin messed things up and it rather eclipsed uh, the, the progress at New Delhi, and, and of course there's this absolute obsession that everybody has that out of the four Dublin principles, everyone's forgotten three and a half of them, <laughs> And they only look at that half of the principle that talks about water as an economic good. And it's just become a rallying cry uh, between, between the different sort of uh, factions, as it were, uh, of people working in the sector. And I think that was a bit of a setback, certainly. But there are still a lot of people who will say to you, no, Dublin was, was not so important. Uh, because, in their opinion, it was a bit of a clique of people who who set up Dublin, and you know, you were either an insider there, or, or you weren't. And if you weren't, then maybe it's not quite as important as, as, we, as we were saying. Uh, then a couple of things in the mid-90s which we, which we touched on, were that the Global Water Partnership was formed, and that was the end of 1995, and the World Water Council was formed at exactly the same time. So, so, so two global organisations suddenly came into being at the same moment, actually driven by slightly different people within the World Bank, ironically. Uh, and they're still both with us uh, to this day. Then, of course, the first World Water Forum uh, followed fairly quickly at Marrakesh in 1997. And we've had those World Water Fora every three years. And I'm sure quite a lot of people in the room have been to the World Water Forum on, on various occasions. So you know about those. Then in the year 2000, when we had the... Millennium Summit and the whole concept of Millennium Development Goals, what we saw in water and sanitation was that those MDGs rather swamped everything else. You know, we were doing some good work already, and, and in particular, uh, within the Collaborative Council, it was, I think, just before <coughs> Gori was leading, maybe it was during Ranji's time, we did some work on uh, what was called Vision 21 which was a long-term strategy document about how everybody could have water and sanitation. You know, what were the, the strategies that we could collectively use in order to achieve sanitation and water for all? And it's a very good document, actually. And then it was completely swapped because the MDG summit came within a few months. 
Um, Vision 21 was, was, uh, was launched at The Hague at World Water Forum, which was in March of 2000. And then, and then the MDG Summit in September 2000 rather, <coughs> rather walked over that. And, and now MDGs have been so dominant in all of our thinking, particularly amongst politicians and, and kind of leading practitioners. So that has been, of course, uh, some exciting aspects of the MDGs, but keep in the back of your mind that they did rather swamp other good things. Around the same time was when the Stockholm Water Symposium, and indeed the Water Festival, which I have to tell you was a very good festival, sadly now defunct. Uh, that then turned into, or evolved into, World Water Week. So the format that you see for World Water Week now is about 10 years old, and that's really grown into being the place where people get together and, and talk and share ideas. I, I'm a big fan of, of uh, Stockholm World Water Week. We then had another uh, thread coming in, which we haven't yet mentioned, which is the regional sanitation conferences. Uh, and the person who invented those was, in fact, Guri Shankar Ghosh. Uh, it was Guri's idea to start having an African sanitation conference and it was part of the campaign leading towards the establishment of the sanitation MDG target. Uh, so the first Africa San conference was in 2002, I think, wasn't it? Um, and we're all about to go to the third one and I'm sure people from here will be going there in, in Kigali quite soon. Now those regional sanitation conferences now take place regularly in Africa, South Asia, East Asia, and Latin America on, on various uh, frequency patterns. And I think they are terrific. They, they are a really good example of places where practitioners and policymakers can get together and actually get some real progress done. So I, I commend those to you. We then have the Sanitation MDG target established in Johannesburg World Summit on Sustainable Development in September 2002, and Guri and others were at the forefront. Uh, Richard, of course, was there, uh, leading on, on uh, putting the political pressure to have the sanitation target achieved. And that's something that people sometimes forget. You know, we, we have that list of MDG targets, and, and a lot of people forget that the sanitation one was not there originally, and it came in mm -hmm. later on, so that was good work. Um, then AMCAO, African Ministerial Conference on Water, that was formed around that same time. And, and there is a legitimate leadership body on water and sanitation, also something we should talk about in the next couple of days. UN Water was mandated or re-mandated or whatever the word is around 2003 and that's taken some time to build up momentum. The, U the UN Secretary General's Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation, UNSCAB, that started in about 2004. So you can see a bunch of activities um, getting going around that time. Uh, and then just a couple of things in the last year or two in terms of milestones. Uh, one, of course, is International Year of Sanitation in 2008. And that gave us a real boost in terms of the political profile of sanitation, which had been, as, as you all know, uh, very badly neglected politically until then. And I think IYS uh, was terrific. We then have Sanitation and Water for All, which got started in, well, really last year. And the aim there is to achieve collective action. It was something Guri was talking about. Have we really achieved collective action? No, we haven't yet, and that's why we started Sanitation and Water for All, which is principally a collection of the developing country governments and the donor governments, with a few third parties and outsiders and multilaterals there to sort of oil the wheels. And we had the first high-level meeting of uh, finance ministers and international development ministers in April of last year and that's one of the rare occasions when finance people have been talking about sanitation and water because you're absolutely right that that's been a real weakness for us uh, to date. So and now our latest one which we're just starting the other day is the five year drive for sustainable sanitation which is uh, an idea of UNSCAB to keep the momentum of the international year of sanitation going over the next few years. They wanted to have a decade, but the people in the UN said, no, we're sick of decades, we've had too many decades. So they haggled and it came down to half a decade. So, it, so it's the five year drive. You know, that's how these things happen. Okay, moving on. Um, major policy trends during these 20 years. Uh, of course, and I haven't got these in any particular order of, of sort of importance, but I've got half a dozen. 
and, and we've talked about them already, so I won't dwell in great detail. Um, integrated water resources management, you know, it's been one of the big phrases in that 20 years, and we all talk about it, and I'm not quite sure any of us really know what it means, but we're all very enthusiastic, and when we give speeches, we always say, and this complies with IWRM. You know, and everybody nods wisely and says, yeah, well done, that's good. <laughs> but we don't really know what we're talking about on that. Uh, the concentration on MDGs, I've mentioned. And, okay, good, in that it concentrated politicians' minds on achieving things and on doing things. Um, bad, because it did lead to number chasing, and what well, still does. Uh, and, of course, the people that get served, the half, who are getting served are the rich people uh, and the easy people. So the, the, the concept of the MDG being a reduction by half actually is counterproductive when we're looking at issues of equity uh, and of inclusion and of serving those people who are most in need of service. So, so in that respect, the MDGs have been a bad thing. Um, Bear in mind, when we're chasing progress and numbers on MDGs, and we all moan and we say to the developing countries, you are not succeeding, bear in mind that the industrialized countries of Europe, Japan, and North America, when they were at an equivalent stage of certainly sanitation coverage, they were taking 40 years or 50 years to halve the number of people unserved. So let's not get too preachy about it. Uh, when we talk to developing country governments and say they're doing slowly because in our own history in Europe and America we were even slower. Uh, another major policy trend is governments opening up to NGOs a bit more. Uh, that's a debating point, but I, I th I've seen that certainly. Uh, water privatisation, Lila mentioned, that has rather come and gone. Uh, you know, it wasted a huge amount of time and energy for some time and everybody got terribly hot under the collar about it and it really, I thought the debate rather missed the point but now we've, we've sort of calmed down on that, we've got over that. Um, the recognition that sanitation is different from water. Now 20 years ago we didn't have that and that's something we've worked hard on recently and I think now we're getting there. I see many, many governments, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa but also in fact South Asia who, who really are now saying, okay, sanitation is significantly different from water, and therefore it needs a different ministry, a different national policy, a different budget line. And that is uh, really good progress, I think. The human rights debates and human rights discussions have been going on all through those 20 years, rather as a sort of different thread. You know, it's a little bit like the, the whole privatisation debate. There were some people who got really stuck into that, and then there were other people that got stuck into, got stuck into, um, thanks, uh, into the whole human rights aspect. And I'm really pleased to see that now, with this recent declaration from the Human Rights Commission, we finally got the human rights discussion actually fully integrated. And that's so now, when we're looking forward, we are saying what we're looking forward to is helping everyone to to attain their rights. So that's a good one. Um, and then moving swiftly on, okay, water is still not as prominent as it should be on the global political discourse, uh, and sanitation even less so. So, what are the key lessons, and have we incorporated them, and if so, how? I think the most important one is that things get done because politicians want them to. And I, and I don't think we have incorporated that particularly well. I think our friends who work in education and health are better at that than we are, and I think we need to learn from them. Another key lesson is that uh, personality clashes uh, uh, tend to underline many of the institutional problems we've had in the sector, and I think we're making some progress there. But if we see leadership now across the water and sanitation sector in developing countries, there's more harmony, there's more sense of coming together and, and common aims than there were around this phase of 10, 15 years ago with all these different organisations uh, um, coming up. And uh, so personality clashes have, have given way to cooperation, except in one or two parts of the world, which I can discuss with you over the drinks this evening. Um, the roles of conferences and meetings in creating a common vision. People are rather critical about conferences, and they say they have high transaction costs, you know, they waste a lot of time, but they're less 
uh, quick to acknowledge that there is a really positive role in con that conferences can fill in achieving this sense of common purpose. And that's something that I'm very interested in, and it's why I go to them. And I think that, pra that practitioners, particularly developing country governments and developing country NGOs, get much more out of those conferences than, than snobby outsiders sometimes think. So please don't be a snobby outsider. I'm not, I don't think anybody in this room is, but there are some who are, and they're rather poo-poo conferences, but I think that's unfair. Um, I'm, I'm winding up, uh, which is what I have to do now, and I'm commending a film. If you want to know how conferences and meetings work, have you seen that film called the Girl, the Girl in the Cafe, which stars Bill Nighy? Uh, it, it's a BBC film. Um, from a couple of years ago. I commend it to you, The Girl in the Cafe. You want to know how international conferences work, watch that film. It's absolutely right. Um, and then finally, uh, last key lesson is spread good ideas quickly and clearly, and CLTS is an example. I mean, I know here we are in the, in the citadel of CLTS. Um, for me, as, as not having been one of its protagonists, I do feel that out of all the exciting ideas and new things that we've seen in sanitation in the last 20 years, CLTS is the single best one. Uh, you know, I'm not just saying that because I'm here. I really do think that is the case. So there we are, and finally, uh, my five points for looking ahead. Point number one, we must agree the post-MDG targets for water and sanitation, and we're starting to do that uh, now, in fact, there's a big meeting in May where we're going to put our heads together about that. Point number two is the importance of equity and the rights-based approach that will help us as what I see as the pathway towards getting these lines, you know, up here. So everybody has water and sanitation. Uh, that's point number two. Point number three is getting our messages better to politicians and decision makers. We talk among ourselves quite well, but we don't talk to politicians well enough. Point number four is let's move on from a grant-based, rather old-fashioned aid approach to a much broader societal, economic and social progress through which we can achieve sanitation for everybody and water for everybody. Uh, and point number five is that our biggest nightmare in all of this is going to be urban sanitation compared to water or rural sanitation. Urban sanitation is going to be, you know, mind-bogglingly difficult. So those are my five points for the future, and my aim, personally, is that I'm not, unlike Guri, I'm not going to go to my grave before we achieve solutions to all of those. Thank you very much. <laughs>